Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight, the 23rd of February, we're very pleased to have Jack Gillis with us. He's going to be tying a Carrie Stevens Green Drake. Been looking forward to this presentation. And we'll talk to you a little bit more about extended bodies and some of the material we discussed last week. But for now, we're the BT's from Boise, Idaho, and we're very pleased to... Uh, have our friend Jack Gillis join us uh, this evening. And Jack is an avid fly fisher and fly tire. You know what? That doesn't surprise me at all. He's a life member of Fly Fishers International and its fly tying group, a member of the FFI President's Club, former verse vice president of the Texas Council, and is chair of the Fly Tying Group's Board of Governors. He is past president of Fort Worth Fly Fishers and past Vice President of Dallas Fly Fishers. He holds the FFI Gold Fly Tying Achievement Award and is an evaluator reviewer for tires seeking to earn a Fly Tying Achievement Award. Jack is a demonstration tire at events like the Northwest Expo, the Texas Fish and Brew Festival, the TRWD Fly Fest, Trout Fest, Salva Grandivu, FFI National Expo, Central Oregon Fly Tying Guild, and a member of the Roadkill Roundtable, a group of fly tires in existence since 1972. Jack, I just about ran out of my breath running through all those accomplishments, but right now, the vice is all yours. All right. Thanks, Al. I appreciate it, and welcome everybody tonight. Tonight, we're going to be tying the Green Drake. Uh, it was a Carrie Stevens fly that she had created. I haven't found a whole lot of history on it, but, uh, you know, I fell in love with a lot of the Carrie Stevens patterns and been tying them for the last few months. Uh, the pattern for this one uh, calls for, let me get over to that camera. All right. It's a partridge hook. This particular one is a, a size 2 9X streamer hook. Uh, we're also using white thread, black thread, and orange floss, uh, silver tinsel, flat, um, white bucktail. We'll have some slopping for the throat. The underwing is four to six strands of peacock hurl. The wing is uh, two rooster cape hackles, one black, flanked by one slightly shorter green. Uh, what makes this one a little different from a lot of hers is the shoulder. She used gadwall flank, and uh, the cheek is jungle cock, and then uh, the head black with an orange band. I typically tie it with an orange band. Uh, this particular one doesn't have it, but um, that's the only real controversy out there. Some tires believe that that was her signature and no one else should use it. Uh, I'm more of a purist and believe in tying it the way she tied it. I pretty much already prepared the feathers for tonight, but I'm going to go through quickly uh, how to tie at least one or uh, put one together. So basically, we're going to take a black feather, strip it down. Now, as far as length goes, that's kind of up to you. This one's about an inch or so behind the bend of the hook. Uh, Carrie Stevens, a lot of tying, tied them about three quarters of an inch back. But there's no really set rule. If you like a longer uh, wing, that's fine. Uh, just, you know, whatever you prefer on it. So then we'll take the green one, strip it down. And then we're going to measure the two. Get them under the camera here. So it's just slightly shorter than the black. And I'm going to tie it just like Carrie would. And she always glued her feathers before she attached them to the hook. So I use Gorilla rubber cement. I found that works very well. Just put a small amount of glue on there.
Jack, real quick, is that shiny side up or down? Up. Shiny side up. Let me get that stuck on there, and then I'll show it back. Just kind of press it together. Hold it there for a second or two. It'll dry fairly quick. And then take your gad wall flank. I'm going to glue it on top as well, on top of the green. You'll want to try to keep the rachis of all these feathers together and going in the same direction. It'll help when you tie the wing onto your fly. Normally, I'd let it dry for a minute or so, but... Since I've already got the ones I'm going to be tying with tied, I'm just going to go move forward and save a little time here for everyone. And then the cheek is a jungle cock feather. For those, most of you I think are familiar with jungle cock. But just a dab of glue there again. And again, you'll want the center or the rachis of your jungle cock to be in line with the rachis on your feathers going in the same direction because you'll want each side to match when you put it on the hook. So that's really about all there is to building the wing. Uh, like say I tied mine earlier today to let them dry out so here's the ones we'll be using tonight. Now, carry typically tied with a 10x hook. Uh, they're very hard to come by. I've got just a very few left, so I'm going to use my 9x tonight, which is a, a pretty readily available. Then we'll want to take the white thread. This is a 140 denier since it's such a, a large hook. Uh, you could also use 200. I come back. Place our thread on the shank. Damn hitch. Come back to just about the point of the hook. We'll want to tie in the silver tinsel. Some people use mylar. Uh, I don't. Uh, I tie with Lagerton or Lagarden, depending on what part of the world you're in. Or Lagerton, if you're in the original name. Tie it in. And then we'll bring it back to the tip of the hook again. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap it forward to the tip of the hook. It'll be about four, maybe five turns. I have seen it tied with oval and flat, so that's really your choice. And as you notice, I've got a fairly long piece here. I'll just put it back out of the way. I save that for the rib. Next, we're going to attach the orange floss. Bring it forward. Now at this point, we'll start wrapping the floss forward. Be a little boring here for a minute. 
but you want to kind of keep your loss as thrust as flat as you can. You can use rayon if you want. I, I use silk, but that's just a personal choice. Typically attach it with white thread underneath because when it gets wet, if it were black or another color, it would show through too much. While you're wrapping there, Jack, in the chat, Aaron asks if those are neck hackles that you made the wings out of. Uh, they are, and you can also, I have found, uh, talking with John McLean, and have started using a lot of saltwater streamer feathers. Uh, they tend to work a little better for such a, a long wing. Sure. And uh, at some point in time, just put it in the back of your mind, but uh, John Kareft would like you to speak a little bit more about how you select your winging uh, feathers. Okay. You know, John, a lot of that depends on what you're wanting to do. Um, and by that, I mean, how wide do you want your wing? Um I like mine fairly thin. So, and again, depending on what size hook I'm using in a 9X, it's going to be long. And as you'll see here soon, I like a long uh, extension on mine at the tail, so to speak. Uh, if you were doing a Carrie Stevens, she tied hers more like that. So, you know, it's kind of a personal preference of, you know, is where you go to get the feather. I would go, let me see if I can get that to focus a little bit. You know, if I'm doing a shorter one, I'm going to be down here. If I'm doing longer, of course, I'm going to be up here. So again, and it just depends on how broad do you want it. The salt waters are going to be a little broader uh, than your standard cock hackle. But in, in talking with John McLean uh, about tying these, if you're doing a fishing fly, the uh, neck hackles or the cock hackles will be just fine. If you're doing a display fly, in the display, they tend to droop, whereas the saltwater streamer uh, do not. Okay, now that we've got the floss tied, we're going to do our ribbing at this point. Keeping them as even as Space as possible, same angle. There's a friend of mine on this call that when he was teaching me how to do this, he said if one of them isn't evenly spaced, it'll be like a bright spotlight on it when you're finished. And he couldn't be more correct. You look at one and it's off a little bit and it's like a big neon sign there. And then go ahead and trim out your excess. I'm going to turn it, the hook upside down. And at this point, uh, we will uh, start putting in uh, the underbelly, which is bucktail. So I'm going to take about this amount of bucktail. See that very well, about that amount. And, of course, start stripping out the shorter 
pairs. I don't necessarily stack them if I can keep them fairly even. But I'm going to get it down to about that sparse. And pull out any stragglers, any short ones. So I end up with something about like that. Now, I'm going to tie it back to about where the wing is going to end up coming off the bend, past the bend. And then we're going to tie in the throat, which I'm going to use slopping for. Kind of even up the tips for tying in the butts. All right, and then we're going to turn it back over. I'm going to take about four to six strands of peacock curl for an underwing. Even the tips up as much as I can there. Tie them in on top. Now I'm going to take my two wings. I'm going to tie both of them in at the same time. You can do it either way. Some people tie them in one at a time, but at this point, right before I tie them in, I'm going to go ahead and change over to black thread. To the head. Jack, can you talk a little bit about the proportion of where you're tying all that in and how it relates to the final um, head that you'll tie off? The... The underwing is just, I tied in just a little short of where I'm going to have the wing. Uh, the bucktail, I try to keep as close to the length of the wing as I can. Uh, as you can see, the throat, um, probably about halfway down the shank on average. Actually, I was, I was talking about the tie-in point. Sorry. Oh, Okay. Uh, probably about, what is it, about two, two and a half millimeters back from the eye uh, is where I'll st start tying in uh, the throat and the underbelly. Or, and then from there, as I add another material, I move the thread forward just a little bit, trying not to tie on top of the previous tie-in. Uh, if you start tying in with on top of one another, you're going to get this big lump in, in your head at the end. Okay, so we've got that set. We're ready to tie in the wing at this point. As you can see, it's going to tie in about a millimeter back or so. I think you see that there. I'm going to tie it in with a pinch wrap. And then pull straight up, keep it on top. Take a couple of soft wraps, make sure you're in line with your shank. And if you are and you're satisfied with it, then you can go ahead and start tying in your head.
counterclockwise spin to keep your thread flat and tie in. And once you're happy with the head, I'm going to do a whip finish. And as Al teaches, start at the bike and come forward with side-by-side -side wraps. Now, there's a couple ways you can do the, the band at the end. I come in afterwards and just tie in the band. Others would tie in a red head uh, or an orange head, and then they'll tie the black in two sections in front of and behind the red, uh, thinking when it gets wet that it won't show through as bad. So that's just a personal preference on which way you'd rather do it. You get your head in, and we're going to do a whip finish, starting at the back and coming forward. For me, I finish it off with healthy hoof. Better get into focus or not there. I do one coat of healthy hoof uh, to seal it because it'll absorb into the thread. And then once it's dry, I'll come by back and apply two to three coats of varnish. You could also do solar as I just happen to prefer using varnish. And that is the Carrie Stevens Green Drake. I'll tell you, Jack, that's a lot easier to tie than I would have believed. Thank you very much. It is. It is not a, an extremely difficult fly to tie at all. Understand, though, that um, I, I've i put a few of these wings together, and it's not an immense job, but it takes a little bit of attention to detail. And it's obvious that Jack has that attention to detail. And he, but he had that all prepared ahead of time. So the fact that he held that wing up and said, I've got it prepared, there's uh, probably a few minutes involved in that too. Maybe even a few half hours, who knows? Yeah, it, it takes to tie both wings. If you do it right, let it set. It's going to take you 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you'll notice the jungle caught, same angle, same direction, same length on both sides. And the weekly tip is kind of a takeoff or uh, from from last week. And I'm just going to show you how to put together an extended body. And there's a size uh, 16 extended body wonder wing that I did just a few minutes before we went on this evening. And uh, it's got a problem. And we're going to talk about that. But I just wanted to, uh, to see. Let's turn this over. You got divided wings, divided tail, how the extended body and everything is built. Well, let me get this fly out of the hook, out of the vise, excuse me. And um, we'll just put it in a tackle plier so I don't drop it. It's small enough that it's hard to keep up with it. Now I need, I need a thing called a mandrel. Now I, that's what it's called when you're breeding rawhide. I don't know if there's a mandrel needed in the fly fishing business, the fly tying business, or whether you're just going to use your bodkin. But anyway, you need a needle and be careful from this point on. And I'm going to do everything I can to not have a human sacrifice on camera tonight. And let's just take a quick look over at the materials area there, Gretchen, if, you, if we could. And I've got some mousse. And this is just a roll of the tan uh, foam. That's an athletic pre-tape foam. It's very stretchy. For those of you that didn't see last week, I'll show you a little bit more on camera. I cut a strip, right, right here it is, off of that. And I'm going to give you a tip. Do not use your great fly tying scissors. Get yourself a pair of whackers and get in there and do it. Because I'll tell you what, if you try to use those little old sharp scissors, you get a really crooked strip. But you'll get a nice strip like I've got here if you uh, use the large scissors. So use your the scissors from your desk or, or wherever. But back over with the vise here. I'm going to just take and put some thread right there. 
Oh, I'll back it up. I want it to be a little bit longer than that. And that's, you'll see that it doesn't really make any difference, but let me just uh, trim that off right there. Okay, now I'm going to go back over and get just a couple of hair fibers of that mousse because I really only want two or three for my tail. And I had this brainstorm when I was turning on the studio tonight just a few minutes ago. So we're going to find out something, see whether it, whether it works or not. But anyway, I've got two mousse fibers, and uh, I don't even have to stack them. As it turns out, I happened to grab two that were lined up with each other. That don't happen very often. But anyway, I am going to tie these tail fibers on right there. And as you'll see, it doesn't make any difference whether they're on the top, the bottom, the sides, around everywhere. You'll find out why here in just a minute. All right, we'll just leave that like that. Let's take our foam. Tie it in place. Whoops. Okay, now here's what I found out. And I want to show you our sample fly there. I twisted the foam into a rope for that. This does not hold together very well when twisted into a rope. And I'll explain to you why. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll just do some rope and then I'll back off and do it flat. But you see how you twist it like that? And then you wrap side by side by side. And then you're going to wrap back over that and slide it off the needle. And uh, that roped up foam does not grip, grip very well. And it, the bodies will come apart. So let's just get back here. And let me just take this foam and kind of flatten it out so it's more of a the flat piece that it was when we started. And we'll just start wrapping a flattened version towards the end of that needle, mandrel, whatever you want to call it. All right, I think I'll just stop right about there. Wait, one more turn. And now I'm just going to come back. And, and now I want you to notice that this is stretchy. See how that can, I can just stretch that? Well, that's, I'm just putting it on under tension, but not trying to pull it to the breaking point. Let me just trim off the waist there. And uh, throw on a quick half hitch. And grab my whip finish tool. And do a stack whip finish. Now, right at, that means they're just all on top of each other. And there we have the extended body on the mandrel. Now, my brainstorm was, well, first off, you take the extended body and, slip, and you slip it off the mandrel. And there's the extended body. Now, the, the length of the tail is probably good for about a 12. Now, I'm wondering, as this slipped off the mandrel, that stretched foam relaxed just slightly. It's still stretched, but it's not stretched as much. And I'm wondering if I can slide the body forward to accommodate this extended body if I decide I wanted to use it on a 16 or an 18. But the tail would be too long if it was a size 12 tail. Well, I'm going to see if I can move it. And you're just going to have to, we're going to experiment together. And there it is. We are adjusting the tail to the length we want it by sliding that up and down. And then it will get tied to the hook. And there's your extended body. Treat it ever how you want to. Color it. Use a felt tip marker. Use the different colors. Whatever makes you happy. But anyway, for right now, I'm just going to put that in my clip so I don't lose it. That's kind of a a cool thing, and I'm just delighted to learn that I can adjust my tail length. So I can, what I can do is I can manufacture a head like we do on a lot of things. And, and we'll talk about that somewhere down the line, how we production tie by tying it in steps. But geez, you could tie up a whole bunch of those extended bodies all with the same length tail and then use them wherever you want to. And you cut the body off to the length you want and you can pull the tail in and adjust it. So I'm delighted. Yes, tonight we're going to have sharing on BTs, and based on the my email, we're going to have several. But tonight we'll start, as we always do, with our good friend Evelyn, and we're going to find, find out whether she's got anything for us or not.
This is the very beginning. <laughs> hey, good job. Good job. <laughs> and now we're going to learn how you put wings together off camera at another time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you so much, Evelyn. I surely appreciate it. Uh, the, You're welcome. The main thing we were looking forward to, though, tonight is Dutch Bachman is got some exciting news for us and that I'd like to comment after Dutch is completed. Yeah, here we go, Al. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really uh, proud to announce tonight that um, we have now launched the Buzz Busick Memorial Fly Tying Award Library. Uh, the award has been presented since 1970 each year. So there are 54 recipients of the Busick Award. The Busick Award is considered the most prestigious award in FFI fly tying. And it seemed to me that for something that is so special or so important and has such history, that we should recognize this more than just one time a year when the award is presented. So in the fall of uh, about 2020, I reached out to Wayne Llewellyn uh, and told him about an idea to create a um, Buzz Busick Memorial Fly Tying Award Library. <clears throat> and I asked Wayne to be the inaugural donor. Uh, I'm very fortunate to consider Wayne not only a friend, but he's been my mentor for a long time, and I'm very, very familiar with his work, and uh, also the fact that uh, that Wayne was very close to Buzz, and all the influence that Buzz had in California during that particular period of time. Wayne was gracious enough to agree to be the inaugural donor, so we began work on developing the Busick Library. Uh, it literally has taken three years uh, to get everything in place. And uh, we're really, really proud to announce that this past this week, uh, the Busick Library has been launched. Uh, if you go to the FFI website, which is flyfishersinternational.org, O-R-G, uh, you'll get a home screen that looks like this right here. If you run your cursor over learn, so here's my cursor. If I run it over learn, I don't have to click. You can, but you don't have to. You'll notice in the drop down menu, it says Buzz Busick Library. If you come down here and click on the Busick Library, you'll get the home page of the library. Now, the flies you see there were tied by Tom Logan. And it is the Western Coachman fly pattern. Uh, and it was Buzz's signature fly pattern. So to begin the library, uh, we have uh, some history uh, of the of, of Buzz Busick. So if you click on that first button, you'll come to a page like this. Now, these are actually some of Buzz's tools. This is his bobbin holder a hackle plier, and scissors. And you might be hard to see it, but right here on his scissors, it's actually engraved buzzes. Uh, so when I first saw that, I thought he must have had a problem in his fly shop with other people picking up his his <laughs> his scissors, but he went ahead and put his name on them. So on this page, if you scroll down, you'll start to read an article about the history of uh, buzz music and the influence he had on fly tying uh, during his era, uh, which was just profound. If we go all the way down to the bottom here, you come to two videos. The top one here is a, about a 37 minute video or interview with the gentleman you see in the bottom picture. This is Mr. Don Lieb. Mr. Lieb was a fly fishing and fly tying companion of Buzz's. Uh, was very much involved with Buzz as he developed the Western Coachman fly pattern and many other patterns as well. Mr. Lieb, is, at the time of this interview, he was 101. Uh, Mr. Lieb has been, he still teaches fly tying classes at age 102 now. Um, 
So he's he's been teaching fly tying for over 80 years. Okay. Um, just a remarkable man. Uh, hands are very steady. And if you watch this video, uh, Mr. Lieb not only dresses the re Western coachman pattern, but he talks about his relationship with Buzz and narrates the techniques and so forth that he uses uh, to dress the Western coachman. If you continue on down this page, you'll see uh, a box for Wayne Llewellyn. This is Wayne's private library box. And you'll notice below this, Al Beatty and Gretchen Beatty. Uh, Wayne is the inaugural donor, and Al and Gretchen have offered to be the next two donors, BUSIC recipients that will provide donation to this library. So if we come back here on Wayne's personal library page and click on that, it'll take us to Wayne's page. Now, I'm not going to click on the first box uh, about Wayne. There's a little bit of a description here, but if you click on that box, you get about two pages of a bio sketch uh, on Wayne. It probably could have been five pages, but um, uh, more detail about his background and influence and fly tying is in this bio sketch behind that button. If you scroll on down, this is Wayne's personal library. Now, what's absolutely remarkable about this is when I talked to Wayne for the first time in the fall of 2020, uh, I wasn't really sure, first of all, if he would be willing to do this, but uh, what he might be willing to provide as a donation as far as articles and videos and so forth for the library. Uh, as it turns out, and believe it or not, uh, there are 20, actually 21, uh, articles uh, that Buzz has or that Wayne has provided uh, for the library, and there's 48 videos included in this. So he has 48 videos that are embedded in these 21 articles. So if we just go to one, for example, you can click on Read More, and here's an article about thread. So this art it's just a remarkable article. If you when you get to this spot, uh, you can you'll see a button here where you can click and read the article. And below this button, on each one of his articles, we've listed the actual videos that appear inside that particular article. So after you read the article, if you wanted to make a reference to go back to find a video. It's very easy to find. But if we click on this button, it'll take us to uh, this particular page. Now, this is the home page for every article that is in the, the library. All the article pages will look like this on the first page. Each one will have a table of contents for that particular article. And then you get right into the article itself. Uh, and I, I can tell you that, uh, it, like I say, it's taken three years to get all this place since we not only have read each one of these articles, we've labored over each of these articles in, in editing and formatting and so on and so forth. They are absolutely extraordinary. Uh, as a matter of fact, Wayne had quite a few videos uh, on the global fly fisher. Uh, and uh, he actually took all of the articles and videos that he had on the uh, Global Fly Fisher and edited every single one of those to make them uh, updated and appropriate for the Busick Library. So this is the most current uh, article and video work of Wayne Llewellyn. But if you'll continue on, and one other thing is Wayne actually has a personal uh, digital microscope uh, and he actually studies thread configuration. So in the article, he not only talks about the difference between nylon and polyester thread and so forth. He backs it up with photographs uh, to, to make the points that he makes in bonding and, and different things that have to do with thread, thread characteristics. But this is just an example of the thread article that you would find uh, in the library. Uh, it, it's, it's very, very, very comprehensive. And any of you that know Wayne would not be surprised to hear that. But a tremendous, tremendous article. Now, if we can go back. Um, just take a look at the, these are the articles 
that Wayne has provided that are in this library. And you can just look, I'm not going to read them all, but you can look at the titles of these articles. Uh, each one of them is very comprehensive, uh, detailed, unbelievably informative and educational, uh, professionally, professionally tr uh, provided. And you can just take a look at it. every one of these titles is something that a fly tire would have interest in, in knowing more about. Uh, the, uh, since we launched this at the beginning of this week, uh, Wayne actually gave me another article that he's offering to put into this, which is cleaning uh, uh, ha uh, hackle capes. And that one by itself is a series of 15 videos, step-by-step uh, -step process on how Wayne uh, cleans uh, hackle capes. So this goes back to the main library. And so once we're, we're back to the homepage now of the library and below uh, Wayne and Al and Gretchen's personal uh, libraries, you'll see a list of all the recipients. Now we're right at a point now that uh, w w our plan was to launch the library with uh, Wayne as the inaugural donor and then send an invitation to the other 54 Busick recipients, inviting them uh, to participate and donate to the library. Uh, and you'll see this list, right? and that's where we are right now. That'll be the next step uh, for the library. But you'll see this list. We haven't even formally invited people, and Alan Gretchen have already committed to it. Dave Whitlock, George Grant, uh, they've committed to it. Um, I could. Many of these names have also expressed uh, their interest in wanting to be included uh, in the library, but this is here's Gary Borger, Chris Helm, Bob Jacklin, on and on and on, and this this is going to become a premier uh, resource for the entire fly tying community. Uh, and when we developed this, uh, we wanted to make sure that this would be available uh, to the entire fly tying community, not just the FFI fly tying group or F FFI membership. Uh, so it's open to everybody. Now, if you go to the home page of the FFI website, um, if you come to this and you are not an FFI member, this is the home page that you'll get when you first access the, the FFI website. Uh, I would encourage you, if you are a member, the first thing you want to do is come over here and click on login and go ahead and log in. If you're not a member and you try to click on anything in here to include the Busick Library, you'll get a white box that will appear that will ask you for your email address. Just type in your email address, uh, send, and then you'll you'll have access to everything that's in there. So uh, I'd be Al, I'd be glad to answer any questions if anybody has any about the Busick Library, but it's it's up there now and and ready for everybody to use. That's just a clarification. You'll have access to the things that are free, uh, not to everything on the website. Yeah, well, yeah, in the library. Yes, that's correct. In the music library, absolutely. Right. So if you see an article in there, uh, you can download the whole thing to your computer and uh, keep it as a reference. And, and in case you all um, haven't got a photographic memory and you remember exactly how to get there, um, I went and put all those directions that Dutch gave you uh, in the chat. All you have to do is go and highlight those directions do a control C that'll put it into the memory of your computer. And then you can go from there to, to, to the, to the website to back up Dutch, just a, a touch on that. Um, having been going to fly fishing shows and fly tying expos and all that type of stuff for more than 40 years, I almost, I had spent almost zero time with fly tires. Why? Because you go to a show, you're either tying flies or you're working a booth or whatever. And when I said, I went to this, I was working these fly shows. It's called keyword in that last sentence was work. And I'm not saying I didn't like the work, but you were there to, to stay busy and talk with the public and so forth. So at the end of the show, I would see, you know, guys like Wayne Llewellyn walk out and I'd say hi when he came in and I'd say bye when he left. And I wouldn't see stuff. Well, for the first time in my life, uh, about three weeks ago, I viewed every video that Wayne posted on, the, on a, an advanced picture, if you will, 
of the music library. I'm not saying that I learned a lot, but I sure got validation on a whole bunch of stuff that I was suspicious about. And with the technical mind that Wayne has, uh, it'll give you answers of stuff that you may be suspicious about. You'll get the answers. And I got some answers also on stuff that I've never paid any attention to after all these years at the Vice, and that's parts of a feather. Wow. Parts of a feather. The rachis. I know everybody calls them rachis. I've called them stems for 60 years. I'll probably never break the habit, but it's also a shaft and it's a rachis and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. It's all in there in Wayne's definition. Look at the feather. Learn the parts. I mean, is a quill feather, is a quill body really a quill? Is it a rachis body? Is it a shaft body? It sure as heck isn't a quill because the quill stops uh, once the feather's sticking out of the skin. So, folks, I don't know. And now I'm going into the weeds the other way. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're going to continue on with our sharing. So I, I made um, thank you cards. There you go. Yeah, go ahead. I made thank you cards. And that's our, our grandson helping with the fly tying. And then inside is a memo. And I did a fly for each one of them. All right. The woolly boogers. So it was awesome. just a real fun time. Awesome. Okay. Um, John Wright. Okay. Well, I, one of the things, first off, John is running a um, an experiment tonight for us. And he is live streaming our live stream to all of Project Healing Waters all across the country via their Facebook page. We don't know how that's all going to work out. We'll probably know a lot more tomorrow after we get a chance to review all the different parts of, of that. But anyway, John, please go ahead with your share. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm sure you all know what these are. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah. Well, my wife and I have been collecting them now for about 15 years. We've been trying to figure out what the heck to do with them. <laughs> One of the things I found was, and I thought, hey, why not just use them to hold hooks? Well, that works. Okay. But what I found a better idea is, why not use them to hold thread? And what I found was, how many of you have ever gone to your thread uh, storage area and find out that you've got pieces of thread hanging all over the place and you got to rewrap it back on the on the spool? And that's what I, I was in the situation of. In fact, you can still see some here. You can see there, right there. There's some thread hanging off there. So I said, well, you know what? Why not put the thread in those things? So what I did. Looks good. What I did is I put, I drilled a hole in the bottom. That's a just a little quarter inch hole. And it's easy to do because every one of these little bottles has a little dimple in the bottom. <laughs> Drill a hole in it. And then go ahead and put two pieces of thread in it. And now not only have I kept the thread from unspooling but now i have twice as much storage as i had before so there's a use for all those medicine bottles you guys have been trying to figure out what the hell you're going to do with mm, i've been putting them in a burn barrel for a long time john i think i'll have to stop that yeah you know and that that the burn barrel is great but that puts all kinds of carcinogens in the air and if yep. you throw them away it puts plastic in the landfill so yeah i i found this foam that Al was talking about a couple of years at the local drugstore and started tying uh, the one on the left is tied with a, some of the pink foam with some red rubber legs tied in to be like an ant. These are tied on a must add 3366 hook because it's kind of heavy and with the foam it sinks really slowly. The one on the right I tied rubber legs in and then tied the foam up to the front leg and then tied a little bit of red of uh, the pink on for a hot spot and i tied these both reverse things but these are the ones that seem to work the best they fall very slowly and i think when they get down about four or five feet they may suspend wonderful hell oh, thanks thanks for that bit of information hey everyone thank you so much for joining us tonight for now, though, that's a wrap. Until next week, see you then.